Let's head back to the Feast Box broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. by All Pro Capital. Put your money to work with smart real estate investments. Visit allprocapital.com for more information. All Pro Capital, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. The Cougars playing for their fourth consecutive season opening win. In the last three they've had, they've not trailed at any point in those games. They lead Sam Houston 7-0 here. They scored a touchdown on the opening possession, and as we talked about, that's 28 wins in a row for BYU win. They score a TD on drive number one. We'll see if that trend stays intact. BYU outgains Sam Houston 93 yards to 15 in the opening quarter as we come back in for the first play of quarter number two. It is Sam Houston punting it away. Jaden Cardell, three boots for 44.3 so far to Hobbs Nyber. He has three returns for 21 yards along of 14. Sam Houston now left to right. BYU coming back right to left in the second quarter. And that was a miss hit and will be into the Sam Houston team area. But a flag flies with some chicanery in the middle of the field there. We'll see if that flag is indeed picked up. That was a wobbler off the foot of Cardell, a short punt. And you heard the official saying 37-37 yard line. That's what it would be for BYU. First and 10 pending the outcome of this flag. Ham, what you see? Well, the way it came off the foot, you would have thought it was blocked. It kind of went end over end, but as you mentioned, it just hit off the outside part of the foot and almost went straight right. So that could really play good to BYU's favor, but uh, definitely a muff punt there. We'll get the call here from Dan Scanlon. During the kick, holding, return team, number 37, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. It's first down. So the Cougars get backed up on the special teams infraction. Down to Mitchell Juergens in the Zions Bank end zone. Mitch, what do you have? Yeah, on the last third down play, I just want to highlight the physicality and the tenacity that Jacob Robinson brings um, on his one-on-one tackles. We saw this last season. One of the, I mean, a a very undersized guy who doesn't have, uh, I mean, he's not going to have a lot of weight on any of the guys he's going up against, but that doesn't, um, you know, defeat... um, his the energy the mindset and he tackles with heart i mean that was a big third down play a one-on-one tackle great form tackle so i love the 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 energy that he brings and uh just the ability to go make plays um from the physical side in in some big tackles so love what he brings to the the byu defense so far oh yeah jacob robinson four career picks Starting, so starting his 11th career game at BYU. Thank you, Mitchell Jurgens and the Zions Bank end zone for 150 years of helping you succeed. Zions Bank is for you. So the Cougars have their worst starting field position of the night. They're on 27-yard line after the walk-off. First and 10, BYU. Slovis on a three-step from the shotgun. Loads up and goes deep down the far side beyond everybody. The intended receiver, Chase Roberts, running stride for stride with Chase was Sam Houston defender Davion Armstead. And Armstead saw that sail beyond him, and he was actually beyond Roberts. So second down, 10. Back at the 27. Aaron Roderick going for the deep ball on a first down. He's really wanting to open up Keaton Slovis' arm. They do have the interior strength to get the run and get him in a better second down position, but they go for the deep ball. Snap under center. For Slovis turns and hand off to Deion Smith. Deion Smith spins off a tackle at the 30 to the 31 yard line, gain of four, third down and six coming up for the Cougs. We've seen Aiden Robbins, five carries, 21. We've seen Deion Smith with his first official rush. His earlier rush was called back. He had gained the first down actually on the earlier play he was involved in. It was brought back on a block in the back. So, first official rush for Deion Smith goes for three yards. The ball carriers have been Robbins, Smith, Slovis, twice including a touchdown scamper, and Parker Kingston on a fly sweep. Slovis is shotgun now. Third down and six now from the BYU 31. He'll sprint out to the right. Set to throw. Flag flies as he stops and fires high. Caught by Isaac Rex. Will it stand? Multiple flags on the play now. One, two, and three flags fly. And all at different parts of the play. First flag that came out looked like a holding. Meatball Smith complaining he was held. <laughs> I like holding meatballs. It's my favorite food. I like holding a meatball sandwich. Pretty tasty, too. I love that nickname, though. 
Why couldn't I have been? And things he's like, it's, balls. and he's like he he embraces it. Like his his social media, he said he says he's a, he said I'm Sir Meatball on Instagram. Yeah. Like he's all he's all he's down with it. He is, and he wears the double zeros that look like two meatballs. <laughs> so he's all in on the meatballs. <laughs> Still in a long officials conversation here as three flags flew, and they weren't all for the same thing. I don't think. At least it appeared to me that they were kind of staggered in how they came out. And there's a long talk about it. Best case here might be offsetting and redo the down because it was going to be a. My favorite food item nickname was pork chop. Uh, pork chop Womack. Well, there was a pork chop. Womack. That's the yeah. one. Yep. Well, let's see. Now, the, 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 and that wouldn't be the best case because Rex had the first down catch, but it was looking to be coming back on a hold at the very least. And now the referee Scanlon's coming over to talk, talk with Casey Keeler about what he wants to do. So this would appear to be favoring Sam Houston. Yeah, I think the it's initial taking a while flag here. was uh, an interior hold. That's uh, where the flag flew and just the road, or sorry, the traffic jam that was going on in the middle. That's what it felt like. Illegal low block. Offense number 20. That penalty is declined. Ineligible downfield. Offense number 83. Five-yard penalty and a loss of down. It's fourth down. Mm. So nothing good happened there. How about that? A BYU. tight end? Illegal that. man downfield? So Isaac Rex is designated as a lineman, as a tight end. So he had to have been covered. Yes. Have him covered up on the edge. Yes. Exactly. So he was the man that made the catch, and they're saying he was covered up. So that. And a loss of down. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot going on here. And it's, a, a scoreboard says 4th and 11. The punt team is still waiting to be sent on here. They're trying to determine exactly, yep, th- that's going to have to be the call here. The loss of down will set up 4th down, so there will be no redo, and here comes the punt team. So BYU, after an opening drive touchdown, has gone punt, turnover on downs, and punt. Noah Smith is back to return for the Bearcats on a 4th and 11 for BYU at its own 25-yard line. And penalties have been contributing to two of BYU's three stalled drives. Rico can really unload this one. He's got a full field, and he unloads this one. 17-yard line catch, Smith. Slaloms three, four tacklers, but then he's dropped at the 27-yard line. Gain of a return of about 10, setting up a first and 10 for the Bearcats at their own 27-yard line. Just underway here in quarter number two, 13-39 to play until halftime. BYU 7, Sam Houston no score. First drive of the game for BYU 50 yards in eight plays. Just under three minutes off the clock, and it ended in Keaton Slovis' first career touchdown run. 7 nothing, and that's been it for BYU so far. Keaton throwing, by the way, is 6 for 11, 59 yards on the night. A pass efficiency rating just under 100. Keegan Shoemaker, we've got a Keegan and a Keaton tonight. Shoemaker 3 for 6 for only 12 yards, and a pass efficiency rating under 70. That was a 58-yard punt for Ryan Rico. Takes us to a timeout on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU in the Big 12 plays here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Pause 10 seconds for station identification. Just after the top of the hour here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. First and 10, Sam Houston at the Bearcat 27-yard line. Their own 27. They're going left to right here in the second quarter. Keegan Shoemaker remains at quarterback. Zach Herbacek is the tailback off his right hip. Strength is left with two wides and a tight end. And the handoff to Herbacek, and he just spins away for a loss of one. Ethan Slade made the tackle. So from the 27 to the 26, it'll be second and 11. Herbacek, three carries for two yards on the night. So... Tyler Batty helped make that play. He actually slid down into what looked like a three technique. He slipped off the ball, slipped and almost fell down, but then he got in the backfield and got a hand on the ball carry to slow him down for that TFL. The hand clap by Shoemaker, the handoff on fly sweep to Phillips, and Malik Phillips gets just a couple to the far side, running it left. 
It'll be third down and nine. Sam Houston is 0 for 4 on third downs. You know, you really struggled as a third down defensive team last year. So far, pitching a third down shutout. And pitching a shutout on the scoreboard at 7 0. It's a third and nine for the Bearcats at their own 28 yard line. Ball far hash. Shoemaker gun with Herbacek. Trips to the right. The look is left. Takes off to the right and will stumble forward and tackled while in midair after a gain of only about four or five. On a fourth down, it's punt time for the Bearcats again. Isaiah Banya on the stop for BYU. BYU brings a four man pressure. They leave enough in the backfield to at least cloud and force that run. That is a coverage push. That quarterback couldn't find a look because of the nice coverage, so he decides to tuck that, try to go get it with his feet. Really good job again by Tyler Batty to trail, come back from where he went, and then get into that quarterback's legs to bring him down. Sam Houston 0 for 5 on third downs, and now punting for the fifth time in five drives is Jaden Cardell. The Bearcats have two first downs on the night. This is a low spinner at the chest of Nyberg. Makes the catch, starts to his left, circles back to his right, and there's nothing happening there. So no punt return. In fact, a loss on the return to the 21, maybe the 20-yard line. With 11.34 to go till halftime. DYU 7, Sam Houston no score, and the Cougs will take the field for their fifth drive of the night. Touchdown, punt, turnover on downs, and punt on possessions 1, 2, 3, and 4. We'll take a break with 11.34 to go till halftime. Cougars with the football up 7-zip on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network, here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. in Laramie, Wyoming. Texas Tech at one point led the Cowboys 17-0. Wyoming has tied it up 17-17 with five and a half minutes to go in the third. One new final since our broadcast started. Texas State does win at Baylor 42-31. And how about a shout out to number seven BYU women's soccer winning at UVU tonight by a final score of 6-1. to one. Now back over to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Two more, two more goals for Aaron Bailey in that one. She can't stop scoring. Sophomore's got five on the year. Greg Rubel, Hans Olsen, Jason Shepard up top. Mitch down on the field. Hans, what are you seeing on BYU's first downs? We've got a first down and ten for the Cougs at their own 22. Well, they've been throwing it on first without their starting receivers. Aiden Robbins only has five carries. Get it going downhill. Keaton Slovis throws screen to the far side to Deion Smith. Makes the catch, but he's cut off by the sideline. A gain of one, maybe two on first down. There's another throw yeah. on first down. So this is, uh, it's multiple drives that are opening on first down with a pass. And it's not getting them the yardage to get them in a good second and five or a second and six where they can maybe go for something deep or go and get that run for the first. They need to get a sustaining drive going, and I think it's going to take the run game to get it going. Roberts and Lassiter are the wide receivers to the wide side. The left of Slovis, who's under center. Lassiter will motion as it's a stretch handoff that goes nowhere to Deion Smith. No gain on the play, maybe even a loss of a yard, either third and nine or third and ten coming up. So that's exactly what they did on the last drive, Greg. They started with a pass. It was incomplete. They went to a run that got them four, and they were in third and six, and that became a problem. Now they're third and ten, and they're struggling opening up this drive with a pass. For some reason, those passes just aren't connecting, and these drives are stalling out. Parker Kingston with Chase Roberts in a wide receiver stack left. Lassiter is right. We will not see Cody Epps tonight. Haven't seen Keanu Hill tonight as the returning receivers were banged up coming into the season. The hand clap by Slovis takes a five-step drop. A crossing screen to Kingston makes the catch, puts on the Jets to the far sideline, but shy of the first down. I don't think he got there. No, it's That be. was a third down and ten, and he got eight and maybe nine. It'll be a full two short, so... Fourth down and two from the BYU 30-yard line. Punt team is poised on the sideline. Yeah, it's going to be short. Really nice drop coverage. Actually, Sam Houston looks good defensively. This is the same defensive coordinator they had back in their national championship run with the FCS level. So he's really good. He's adept. He knows what to look for from BYU. Kept all of his press underneath those routes, and you had to drop it off on that crosser. And you just couldn't get the first. And that was the, the crosser that was behind the line of scrimmage. So 
It was a cross screen to Kingston, who only got eight of the ten. Noah Smith is back as Rico punts away, and the BYU offense has been stalling out since opening up 7-0. The catch made, and immediately the tackle made. No gain on the play. As McKenzie, Marcus McKenzie, one of the sons of your former teammate Brian McKenzie, makes the tackle. Good for him. Love seeing it. Brian McKenzie, back in the 90s, was as fast a running back as you're going to find. Not only was he fast, extremely powerful, an underrated linebacker, running back in BYU history, Brian McKenzie. Well, because this game began late on FS1, they're making up for lost time in terms of timeouts. So we'll take a break with 9.28 to go before halftime. It is BYU 7, Sam Houston 0. The score stays 7 zip Cougs on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU in the Big 12 plays here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, I'm not just saying I'm going to do it every time this pops up, but I did it once. I'm going to try it again. Yeah. Hands, take it away. Bam Bam's Barbecue, baby. Perfectly smoking each cut of meat just for you. Come in and enjoy Central Texas Barbecue right here in Provo. Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Bam Bams. 9.28 to play before halftime. BYU 7, Sam Houston no score. Bearcats first and 10 at their own 22. Keegan Shoemaker shotgun. Pulls away the fly sweep fake and throws back. Shoulder complete for a first down. 35 and 40 yard line to Charles Crawford the third. You catch BYU in a corner blitz. You're going to bring Garrett Camden off the edge. The Weber State transfer. You're getting aggressive and you're bringing that corner blitz. You've got to get home. Nice look by the quarterback. Shoemaker gun. He's got twins to the right. Drops back and throws complete to the 40-yard line to Malik Phillips. Kind of a jump pass fading backwards by Shoemaker who lobs it to the hands of Phillips and another big gainer for Sam Houston. They're driving now to the BYU 40-yard line. Really nice job by Shoemaker to sit in the pocket. He knew he was going to take a hit there. He had pressure coming off of the right edge, and he took the hit. Shoemaker hands off middle. That's a stop for no gain. Charles Crawford the third, the running back on the give. It'll be second down 10 from the BYU 40-yard line. BYU stack in the box. It's almost like they knew that run was coming in, in that play. They really shoved the box full. Seven guys that are hammering down on that run right there. BYU now goes to a 3-3-5. Three down linemen, three backers, five defensive backs on a second down 10 from the BYU 40. Shoemaker guns it far side. Complete for a gain of five. Catch on the numbers by Jay Rockwell. Give him only three on that. Came back to the ball, so it'll be a third down long, six, almost seven. And this may be four down territory for Sam Houston. 37-yard line of BYU. Third down, seven. Her box check is the tailback off the left hip, it would appear, of Shoemaker. Keegan Shoemaker, five for eight, 50 yards. Has run three times for minus four, including that big sack. In the gun, the hand clap. Chest eye snap. Lobs it up down the far boundary. It is incomplete and no flag on the play. Defensive back running stride for stride with Rockwell was Camden Garrett. It'll be fourth down seven from the 37. And will the offense stay on the field? If they wanted to try for points here, you're looking at 54. And there aren't really proven kickers historically. And so the punter, Cardell, comes out in punt and pin posture. Let's see what they choose to do. Is there now 0 for 6 on third downs are the Bearcats? And indeed, Cardell in to punt on a 4th and 7 from the BYU 37. In that drive, they targeted Camden Garrett, the Weber State transfer, three or four times. They were able to find strikes on a couple, and then they brought Camden Garrett on the corner blitz. They they were taking advantage of that left side until they couldn't. Camden Garrett with really nice press coverage on the outside on that third down to force this fourth. We're halfway through quarter number two, 7.24 remaining until the break, 7-0 BYU. 30 seconds in length on that timeout. And so a 30-second timeout's been taken by BYU as we stay right here with it. Rechecking some numbers for you for BYU offensively. Keaton Slovis, 8 for 13, 68 yards in his BYU debut. Pass efficiency rating of 105.5. Shoemaker's right there with him. 6 for 10, 53. A 104.5 pass efficiency rating. Aiden Robbins, 
has carried it five times for 21. And nothing much doing for the Sam Houston run game. 11 carries for a net of nine, so 0.8 yards per carry. BYU's at 3.6. Leading receiver, Chase Roberts, two for 18. Lasseter, one for 18. And for Sam Houston, Malik Phillips, one for 20 to pace. Watch the fake. Cardell at midfield. Awaits the long snap. We'll punt it away. Backspin it, and we'll... Not take enough off. It'll get into the end zone. So a net of only 17 on the punt as BYU will take it first and 10 on the touchback. Leading at 7-0. BYU has won its last three season openers and has not trailed in any of them. They've kept the lead in this one but have not done much offensively for a little while. We'll take a break, see what the Cougs do with their next drive. It'll be first and 10 BYU at the Cougar 20-yard line. This is BYU football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head back to the Feast Box broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. 16 to play in the first half. BYU 7, Sam Houston no score. It's been that way since BYU's first drive of the game. Keaton Slovis scoring on a touchdown run to open the scoring, and that's been it. Keaton on a five-yard rush. We stay 7-0 midway through quarter number two. BYU next week home to Southern Utah. Sam Houston will be against Air Force in Houston at NRG Stadium next week. Then they'll be at Houston the following week. Houston beat UTSA today in the Cougars' first game as a Big 12 Conference member. So one set of Cougars have won in their Big 12 debut. Can another set of Cougars do the same here tonight? Keaton Slovis looking to get BYU back into a groove. Not much happening offensively for BYU as L.J. Martin gets his first snap of the night. Martin will be the tailback as BYU realigns. Lassiter and Marion wide to the left. Rex is part of double tight right. Martin off the left hip of Slovis. They now motion to Tripp's left. Pulls it away from Martin. Slovis on a deep drop. Throws to his left. Fakahua makes the catch, but for a gain of only three. Mason Fakahua, catch number two on the night. He's now two for 14 on the evening. BYU setting up a second down and seven with exactly seven minutes remaining in quarter number two. So uh, another pass on first down and thrown out to the flat trying to get it out to the perimeter. Probably a downhill run again. Slovis gun, hand clap, quick screen to Marion, makes the catch and has the first down or close to it. I think he got to the line to gain. Yep, move the sticks. Keelan Marion makes the catch and catch number two for Marion results in first down number six for BYU to the 31-yard line. First and 10, BYU football brought to you by Delta, official airline of the Brigham Young University men's football team. I like that slip route right there, and that was really nice by Darius Lassiter to get the block on the edge so that uh, that the receiver was able to get to the outside of that. Pistol formation for the second time tonight. Martin behind Slovis. Play fake. Pressure comes in on Slovis, and he throws while going down. Dumped it at the feet of Mata'ava Ta'ase, the tight end. And no flags. So third down, I beg your pardon, second and ten. There is no foul for intentional grounding. Number 99 was in the area of the pass. It's second down. And that was Mata'ava Ta'ase. That's where the pressure came was right over Mata'ava. Uh, and, and I, it, it's almost like he, lo- he lost minutes, what his seconds. responsibility was in six, that play. Zero, That's a broken play. Seven. to play until halftime. The clock stopped at 2nd and 10. BYU at the Cougar 31-yard line. Cougs out gaining Sam Houston 115-62 at the moment. 4.4 yards per play for BYU to 3 for the Bearcats. Slovis takes the shotgun snap, hands off to Deion Smith. Deion sweeping to the right and nowhere to go. Run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Loss on the play. Third down and long coming up for BYU. So again, a pass on first down and a run on second. You know, it's it's interesting. Maybe just switch that up a little bit. Uh, trying to get to the perimeter. I, I understand what he's seeing, trying to get to the outside, see if he can use a little speed and find a cushion on the outside. Really good job by Sam Houston to come up and make that play. Third down, 14. BYU 2 of 6 is all on third downs. Late defensive platooning for the Bearcats as Keaton Slovis awaits a shotgun snap from Paul Miley. Deion Smith is the tail. They motion. Kingston and set him up in the slot left. Play clock down to two, down to one. Timeout, not going to get it off. Timeout BYU on a third down and long. Timeout. 
BYU. That's their second of the half. 30 seconds in length. We'll keep it here as the Cougars discuss their third and 14 options. Hands. So this is what you get a little bit when you've got young receivers. You know, you and let's note, when you say that, there's no Keanu Hill tonight. There's no Cody Epps tonight. So when you got your backups and some young receivers that are trying to get position and Keaton Slovis is seeing something, maybe checking to it, trying to get a positional shift, they're having a hard time getting into the positional shift. You saw they brought LJ in for just a minute. Um, the running back, LJ Martin, came in for just a minute. He was having a hard time getting his position. So there's just a little bit of miscommunication going on with the offense to get themselves set and in position for these plays. BYU facing a third down and 14. BYU snapped 27 plays here in the first half to the Bearcats 21. And this is a big one with 525 to go till the break. Slovis on a three-step. On the balls of his feet, throws incomplete. That ball may have been tipped off his finger. Intended for Rex on a crosser coming to the left. Didn't get close to the target, and BYU punts it away. Well, this is really frustrating because that's a three-man rush right there, Greg. Sam Houston brings three guys to get the pressure. When you only rush three guys... You should be able to hold that pocket every single time. So that's frustrating. You get a little bit of pressure that comes right up the middle off the three-man rush. And now you've got all these defenders back there clouding out the situation. Rico hammers this one. Just hammers this one. It's bobbled at the seven-yard line. And fortunate for the Bearcats to recover at the six. Because that ball was loose on the ground with Cougars on rushing. Zach Herbacek. Had to backpedal. I thought he'd let it go. He tried to make the catch, bobbled it on just a rocket from Rico. And it'll set the Bearcats up first and 10 from their own six. And this might be the sequence BYU needs to get back and right. And that is, if BYU can go three and out defensively, they'll get a short field and maybe can score in the final four minutes of the first half. It's key because the Cougs can then own the middle eight. They'll get the ball to begin half number two. It's imperative. Holding. Return team number 32. Half the distance. That penalty's half the distance to the goal. It's first down. So you're looking at first and ten from the three. If the Cougs hold here, the offense will get a shot on a short field before halftime and then own the first possession of half number two. That punt might be a bit of a game swinger. It was 65 yards off the foot of Rico. Beautiful. And what I love is you called McKenzie's name earlier. Number 32, very fast. Marcus McKenzie. He, He was right there to almost get that turnover. Up to the defense now. Great time for a three and out to create a short field the other way. They're in pistol. Gentry trails Shoemaker. The motion man, Izzy Deyi. He remotions to tackle right. The handoff middle and a good run by Gentry. A seven-yard run on first and ten from the three. Gives them some breathing room. They found a little seam right in the A-gap, right between your two defensive tackles. Linebacker was sitting back just a touch. Nice seam and w- way to hit it. And that just turned the volume right down. Yeah. That yeah. just turned that ter- turned it off. Uh, BYU fans need to turn that volume right back up because this is a big second down. Here we go. From the 10-yard line, second down three. BYU seven, Sam Houston no score, 435 to go till halftime. Shoemaker in the gun, Gentry off his left. He's got a wing back to the left as well. Pass in the right flat, complete end for a first down or near the first down marker. Jax Sherrard with his first catch of the evening. And they mark it a half yard shy of the line. The games will move the sticks from first and 10 at the three out to the 14-yard line. A new set of downs for the Bearcats. Jack Sherrard is a transfer tight end. Out of Davidson. Houston. Yeah, came out of Davidson. He is a big target. He's a big body. He's six foot five, 255 pounds. I knew they were going to hit him at some point. He's one of those guys they put on the four-game red shirt last year to hold back for this year. Shoemaker in the gun. First and 10 Bearcats at their own 14-yard line. The pull away from the back. The screen complete to the left, but nothing there. Not a lot. A yard to the 15. Ife Adeyi makes the catch on the screen. A.J. Vonkbachan makes the tackle for a gain of one, setting up second and nine. Clock rolls to 3.35. BYU has one timeout remaining here in the first half. Great job by corner Eddie Heckard, too. 
Eddie Heckard is sitting way on the outside, and he's pressing all the pressure back inside. So he wants to force that play back into his teammates, and he did a good job there. Second down, nine. Ball far hash, Bearcats left to right. Audible by Shoemaker on a seven-second play clock. The crowd gets loud at 3.05 on the clock. They vacate for Shoemaker. They throw the screen again out in front of the receiver. Makes the catch right flat. Turns up field and near another first down from second and nine to third down. And long one, maybe two here. Didn't get to the line to the gain. A line to gain near boundary. 22-yard line, third down and two. Massive down for BYU to get the ball back. And with a chance to own the middle eight, need to stop here on third and two. Long one, almost two. Really good blocks on the outside by those Sam Houston receivers. They picked up a couple of those BYU corners and that's what gave him the extra yardage to get the short distance here third down long one on the 23 yard line pistol formation Shoemaker on the give I don't think he got it John Gentry forced back and did not make it on a third down on long one Ben Bywater fires the gap love it he, see, he has the vision of it. He fires the gap. It's almost like the C's part, and Ben Bywater runs right through and gets the tackle. The spot is almost a yard shy, and the clock now rolls to 158. BYU can stop it one more time. The offense stays on the field for the time being, and they may just drain the play clock here and ultimately call timeout. And that was a great play by Ben Bywater. I can't stress how great that tackle was he just made in the gap. Fourth and one from the Bearcat 23. The play clock at three, two, and one. Don't expect to play. There won't be a play. Timeout. And the punt team almost certainly now come on with 134 remaining in half number one. It's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> Timeout. Nice call. You Sam Houston. It. That's their second and a half. Timeout on the field. So we stay right here with a 30-second break at the 23-yard line. The nose of the ball about a foot beyond the 23. So... A little less than a yard to go, but a fourth and one from inside the 25 with 94 seconds remaining until halftime. If the punt is away, BYU will have less than 90 seconds to score before the break. We'll take a break. Our last time out of the first half comes with BYU leading 7-0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Olsen and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The game is brought to you by All Pro Capital. Put your money to work with smart real estate investments with All Pro Capital. I think it's a money moment of the game, Hans. You've got 134 to go before halftime. BYU nursing a 7 0 lead, and Sam Houston's about to punt it away from its own 23 yard line. So the Kooks should get a decently short field, and they'll be in two minute mode with about a minute and a half to try and get a score before the break. Give themselves some new momentum to then get the ball to begin half number two. Well, a lot of times the two minute drill is exactly what the doctor calls for. It's just a different tempo and it's a different look. Keaton Slovis is really good in a two minute. He's been good in a two minute. I know coming out of camp, there was a lot of conversation that his two minute drills were really good. You and I had a conversation with Aaron Roderick that specifically mentioned a great two minute drill. So we'll see how he does in live action. Jaden Cardell lofts it away. Nyberg fair catch called for at the 36 of BYU, catching it between the hash marks. So it's a 64-yard field with 1 minute and 27 seconds to go before halftime. The Cougars looking to at least get into field goal range, but to score one way or the other, and then again try and own the middle eight, which is the final four minutes of half number one and the first four minutes of half number two. Teams that win the middle eight, have a pretty strong win-loss correlation, all, th- all other things being, you know, more or less considered. It's the chance to take momentum and continue it into the second half. BYU must score to end half number one for the middle eight to be uh, truly magnified. Let's see how the Cougars do here with 1.27 to go on the first half clock. It is first and 10 BYU at the 36. BYU's long completion tonight has been 18 yards to Darius Lassiter. Keaton Slovis, back shoulder, Rex, and can't haul it in. There was contact as the ball reached him, and he reached his hands out to try and double-clutch grab it and could not. And so it'll be second down and 10. That's pass interference. That corner absolutely locked up Isaac. His hands were up in his grill before that ball got there. That's a missed call by those officials.
And it's a first down play that gains nothing. Second and 10 from the 36 of BYU. Slovis gun. He's got Robbins off his right hip. Pulls it away from Aiden. A sprint right from Slovis. Sets the platform and throws on the out. A diving catch made by Parker Kingston at the boundary. Nice grab by Parker. Extends for a five-yard gain. Setting up a third down and five. And the clock at 114. I notice when Keaton Slovis gets out on that right side, he really guns it. He's throwing it so hard. It's almost like he needs to relax and find just a little bit more of that touch. Now, that's a pass that needs to be thrown hard. But now you've got a third and four. This is a really difficult down and distance. The clock stopped as... Kingston went out of bounds. 114 now before halftime. Third and five from the 41. BYU motions to trips left, including a tight end Rex. You've got Kingston and Lassiter and Rex all to their left side, the wide side. Play clock down to two, down to one, and delay of game didn't get it off. With a timeout on the board, BYU did not get the snap off. Now they're out of timeouts with 114 to play in half number one. A lot of working parts on the offensive side, and they're trying to manage these young receivers, and they're trying to manage this new backfield. And you're just seeing that their positioning is a little bit delayed. Delay game. BYU. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. Third down and ten. That's five penalties for 30 yards here in the first half. So you're pacing for double-digit flags in game one. You also got to be careful, Greg, because... You don't want to give the ball back to him with a minute 10. Yeah. Sam Houston, despite gaining 82 yards and no third down conversions, is in the game with BYU. It's 7 nothing with 114 to go till the break. It's now a third and 10 for the Cougs at their own 36. Ball far hash. Motion Roberts to trips left. Snap Slovis. Short drop. Looks right. Throws right. Back shoulder incomplete. Intended for the tight end Rex. BYU. Did not move the ball with a minute and a half to play in the first half. And the Cougs will punt it away. Nothing has gone for the Cougs since opening up 7-0 on drive number one. Now you give Sam Houston the ball back with about a minute as they're able to get themselves into a two-minute drive. And we'll see if Shoemaker can try to put something together. Slovis won for his last five. And just over 50% for the half at 11 for 20. Rico. Short punt to the right, and we'll get a good bounce down the boundary, stay in bounds, and eventually roll out inside the 10 and maybe inside the 5. That looked like it was headed for the team area, or at least out of bounds, but it actually did a nice job tracking the paint to the 11-yard line. So a better punt than might have it looked originally. Favorable bounces for BYU down the boundary, and from the 11-yard line, Sam Houston first down and 10, 59 seconds to go. They still have a timeout on the board for BYU. And one for Sam Houston. Of course, the Cougars did not call that timeout with the play clock running down moments ago. You never want your punter to be the player of the game through the first half. And right now, Ryan Rico's done the most work for BYU. That's a really nice punt. No return. Puts it out of bounds. Keeps the clock running as it kind of dribbles along the ground and then out of bounds. Moves the clock down to 59 seconds. Five punts with an average of 51 and a long of 65. We've seen 12 punts here in the first half. Seven for Sam Houston, five for BYU. Zach Herbacek takes a sweeping handoff left for no gain with 50 seconds remaining. And Sam Houston may be content to just get to the locker room down only 7 nothing. Well, that's not a bad situation for them. They're going to go in at halftime, and they're going to take that as a win. If I'm Sam Houston, I'm in a half, and I'm saying, we got this thing. That's big-time momentum gain for them. So they're feeling really good, and I think you're right. They're just going to take this into half down 7-0. So 30 seconds on the clock, 19 on the play clock, a snap, and that'll do it. So Sam Houston, despite not gaining 100 yards, will feel like they got some things done in the first half, at least defensively. BYU, conversely, gains only 116 yards in the first half. And now with 14 seconds to go, and the play clock down to one, Sam Houston had to call a timeout. Timeout. Sam Houston. All they wanted to do was take a snap to end the half, but they they didn't didn't get it done. Now, had the flag been thrown for delay of game, they would have done it again and taken the snap to end the half. So it's really kind of inconsequential. Got him, and, 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 and inconsequential, unfortunately, kind of defines BYU's uh, offense after that first possession. The Cougs next six drives, four downs and punt, six downs and then turnover on downs, three plays and punt, 
three plays and punt, five plays and punt, three plays and punt. Yeah, it's kind of mind-numbing because you've got a running back in Aiden Robbins. You've got running backs in L.J. Martin and Deion Smith. You've got running backs, and you've got a really heavy offensive line. I would imagine they go in at half and they come out with more of a powerful domination. Now, I get the fascination with Keaton Slovis. He's got the arm. He's got the experience. But he's also got a bunch of young receivers that can't get themselves lined up without costing them a delay of game. So it's really a double-edged sword right now that BYU's dealing with. All right. We just had the last snap of the first half. The Bearcats took it inside their 10, and that will take us to halftime. So BYU scores this first. Is the end then of the first half. Has yet to score again. 7 nothing. BYU is the score after 30 minutes. BYU in its first season and first game as a power conference team. Facing a team playing its first game as an FBS member. Making the transition from FCS to FBS is Sam Houston in 2023. Let's head down to our Mitchell Jurgens with Kalani Sitake. Mitch. Coach, uh, the offense has struggled to convert, but your defense has been rock solid. What's been your assessment of the first half? Yeah, I mean, just that. We need more sense of urgency on the offensive side. Just the little things, getting lined up, breaking the huddle, all that. Getting on the line scrim, getting on the, on the ball. Uh, more sense of urgency, so we'll, we'll get that done. Make some adjustments at halftime, but uh, you know, this game's far from over. We can do a lot better. Uh, we have played our best, and we, we need to make sure that all three phases are doing well. Proud of the defense, how they're tackling, how they're playing right now. Gave a couple big plays on some missed assignments, but other than that, they're doing well. And then, uh, you know, with our punt game, again, uh, a lot of great, great punts from Rico. He's done a great job flipping the field for us. So, he put it together. We only got 30 minutes left to play, so we've got to figure out a way to make all three phases clicking all, on all cylinders. Yeah, up just seven. What do you want to see most from your team in the second half? Yeah, yeah, more sense of urgency. I mean, I, I think right now we're talking two phases are doing well. Let's just make sure that we consist, consistently do that on special teams and, and on defense. And then we need the offense to get rolling. There's, there's no uh, no hiding that, but uh, we'll, we'll be fine. I, I know these guys are ready to roll, so we've got to get Keaton and the boys ready to play. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mitch. And BYU head coach Kalani Sitake. Halftime recap is coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.